Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is that you're joining me for this video, thanks once again for clicking on the Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review channel. The subject of today's video is the Conklin Endura Abalone Fountain Pen. This episode of the Penboy Boy Fountain Pen Review channel is sponsored by my good buddy, Ron, over at penchalet.com. Please check out penchalet.com for all your fountain pen needs. Click on the YouTube radio podcast link at the top of the page where you will be taken to a passcode field. Type in the letters PBR to be taken to a special page where you will be provided with exclusive deals for you inky savages. You will also be provided with a special discount code that will score you an extra discount on all products on the Pen Chalet website when used at checkout. Also, don't forget to check out the Pen Boy Roy Pentertainment Podcast, available on your favorite podcasting app. Just be forewarned, it's not for children. You have been warned. The Conklin brand was established in the year 1898 by our good friend Roy Conklin. He was a pretty smart and innovative dude and was responsible for creating the first self-filling fountain pen with the Conklin Crescent Filler. Now, recently I was telling this to one of my buddies who understood this as a pen that refills itself. So let me just clarify that in case that's what you're thinking. No, the pen was not autonomous. It did not dunk itself in ink and literally refill itself. What it meant at the time to be a self-filling fountain pen was a person didn't have to constantly dip their quill into a bottle of ink to write. With Roy's new self-filling fountain pen, the writer was able to fill their pen and write without having to do that anymore. Now, this may seem very normal for us, but realize in the 20th century, this was a huge deal. As prior to this, the idea of a pen that was filled with ink didn't exist. Later in the year 1924, the Conklin brand introduced the Conklin Endura. This was another pen that had a filling mechanism. However, by this time, other pen brands were enjoying success with another mechanism called the lever filler. This filling system was becoming so popular that it put pressure on the Conklin brand to give it a try. The Conklin Endura was well received and became a staple in the brand. Everything was hunky-dory until the 1950s when the ballpoint pen made its entry into the world and ruined everything. It was at this time that the brand had to close its doors and call it quits. Fast forward to the year 2009, the Conklin brand was acquired by Yaffa Brands. This year, the brand released a new version of the Endura foregoing the lever filler in favor of a cartridge converter filling system and gave it a new opulent look using abalone shell in the entire pen. This new Endura is a limited edition pen with only 1,898 made in commemoration of the year that the Conklin brand was established. The abalone shell is allegedly sourced from New Zealand and is as authentic as it gets. That's all I have for the background information. Moving on to the neutral zone. Those elements about the pen that are neither good or bad or can be good or bad depending on you. The nib is a number six sized stainless steel nib made by Yovo. It's black and has the familiar crescent-shaped breather hole to pay homage to the original pen that started it all. Under the breather hole is the brand name, followed by Toledo, USA, the location where the brand made their pens back in the day. This is not to be confused with where the pens are made currently, as they are currently made in China, with the nib being made in Germany. The nib size is located on the shoulder of the nib. This one is a broad. The feed is your standard cheapy plastic feed found in many modern pens today. The nib and feed are friction fit into an unscrewable nib unit housing that screws into a slightly concave rose gold plated section. The threads of this section are a metal thread assembly with threads on the interior to screw in the included threaded converter. The section screws into the rose gold metal thread assembly of the barrel. The outer threads of the barrel are used in capping and caps in about three quarters of a rotation. The end of the thread assembly has a rounded step that comes out past the diameter of the barrel and will make contact with the fingers no matter how close or far from the nib the pen is gripped. The rest of the barrel is a straight cylinder full of abalone shell in a faceted design. Now, despite its faceted look, do not be fooled. In the hand, this is a perfect cylinder. At the end of the barrel, you have an end cap that like the front barrel threads, has a rounded step, followed by threads for posting the cap. 
the cap follows suit with the rest of the pen with its rose gold trim and opulent abalone shell. The finial is a plain rose gold finial with a flat top. The base of the flat top has, as in the barrel and the end cap threads, a small step. The clip is the same clip design that is seen on most Conklin pens, only this one is not a rocker clip, rather a tension fixed clip. The center band is a rose gold center band with Endura on the front and the limited edition number on the rear. The pen was packaged in the standard Conklin packaging with the blue sleeve on the outside. Slide that off and you have your pretend leather clamshell box. Open that up and you have your pen sitting atop a bedding. Also included is a warranty card, instruction card, and a bookmark sized card on the brand as well as info on the pen. I think that's a nice touch. Underneath the bedding is a secret compartment hiding a dime bag filled with a blue and black ink cartridge as well as a large foldout with other Yaffa products and information. That's all I have for the neutral zone. Moving on to the good. Those elements about the pen that are good. There is so much about this pen that qualifies in the good, particularly in the appearance. Where do I begin? I am in love with the way this pen looks. It's so vibrant and shiny. I am really seduced with the way light shines off the surface of the pen, redirecting colors and constantly changing the reflections. The flat surfaces and the visible facets constantly give the illusion that as you rotate the pen, the surface is a symbiotic surface that's constantly moving. You know what this pen reminds me of? This reminds me of those old comic book trading cards back in the 1990s where the cards were shiny hologram surfaces where if you look at it at one angle, it's like one image, but when you change the angle in your hand, the character of the card moves to another pose. That's what this pen reminds me of, and I'm really enjoying it. While I have to agree with my podcast co-host, Tom the Odd Oink, that this is a gratuitous amount of abalone, I'm not complaining. I love it. I love that the entire pen is layered in abalone except for the rose gold trim. I also really appreciate the contrast between the look of the pen being a faceted pen and the reality of the pen in the hand actually being a round cylinder. It's really cool. So the pen is like an optical illusion. I like it. I like it a lot. Let's talk about the build. How it looks is one thing, but how does it feel in the hand? Good question. I'm glad you asked. In the hand, this is a sturdy, hefty, and dense feeling pen. It's got a good weight to it and feels like a solid pen. Now, I am fully aware that just because a pen is on the heavier side doesn't necessarily mean it's a higher quality pen. But sometimes when a pen feels on the denser side like this pen does, it does help fulfill that false prophecy. But as it stands with this pen, the construction is on point and feels rock solid. I also think that the rose gold trim and furniture works really well with the overall look of this pen. That's all I have for the good. Moving on to the bad. Let's talk coin. This pen has an MSRP of $145. With online retailers here in the US, you can score this pen at a discounted price of $116. I think that is a super fair price as this is the least expensive full-bodied abalone pen on the market with the next lowest priced full-bodied abalone pen I know of being the Laban abalone coming in at an MSRP of $260. From there, we only go up in price with the other brands. That's all I have for the bad. Moving on to the ugly. Those elements about the pen that should not be, but are. I really like Yovo nibs. I think they are solid nibs and generally perform really well. I love that the Conklin brand is using them. I'm not entirely thrilled with this one though. It's deceptive. Because as you can see at the start of the writing sample, it works as good as any other pen with a Yovo nib out there. I love it. But it would seem that as I continue to write, the ink saturation begins to fade. Not just that, but as I continue on, the nib eventually starves of ink. Now, one could argue that I'm using a cheap Guler brand ink cartridge, but let me assure you that I've inked this pen up with several different inks and the results were the same, unfortunately. With this pen, this is not a case of hard starts caused by baby's bottom because if you watch closely, the ink will starve halfway through writing a letter. In the case of this pen, I am guessing that it's an issue with the cheapy plastic feed, its shape, the super narrow double ink channels, and its generic one size fits all design not being entirely compatible with the Yovo nib and the amount of ink it needs to keep writing. What I'm finding more and more is that these feeds are really hit or miss when they are paired with Yovo nibs, being that Yovo nibs have a slight contour to the underside of the nib that the cheapy straight plastic feed doesn't always conform itself with. In the case of other nibs, such as the original Conklin nibs or steel Bach nibs, 
I find that the shape of the nib is less contoured and straighter as a result, enabling more capillary action between the feed and underside of the nib. I really do wish that the brand went with the feeds that we typically see in the Yovo nib units with the single ink channel. These feeds seem to work very well with Yovo nibs as they are softer and more bendy and will conform to the shape of the Yovo nib contour. But being that this is not the case for my pen, there will be a need for tinkering and heat setting to get this pen to write consistently. That or exchange it, which is what I opted to do. And I've said this before, I really shouldn't have to and neither should you. Another thing I want to touch on in the ugly is in the end cap design and the posting. As you saw earlier, the end cap is threaded and therefore requires you to screw the cap onto the end in order to post the pen. Now, I'm not a huge fan of that, but let's just say for a second that I didn't care. What I do care about is the fact that the clip when screwed onto post is not entirely aligned with the nib. Additionally, it threads three different ways, making the clip set in three different positions depending on where you start the posting. The pen is rather long when posted and the clip never really touches the hand when writing, no matter how you hold it. But the orientation not lining up with the clip and having three positions is an OCD trigger for my lizard brain in the worst way. Lastly, I hate it when using a pen as it was meant to be used causes damage to the pen itself. In the case of this pen, it happens in the posting. See that scratch? That's from the cap screwing onto the end cap when I was posting it. That's all I have for the ugly. It's high noon. Decision making time. Should you or should you not pull the trigger on the Conklin Endura Abalone Shell Fountain Pen? I made a lot of gripes in the ugly, didn't I? But the reality is, the Conklin Endura Abalone Shell Fountain Pen is actually my favorite Conklin pen. I really like this pen, and I think that it's a great value for the money considering the amount of abalone in the pen, as well as if you consider that this is one of the cheaper full-bodied abalone pens on the market. Now, I know I did make a stink about the writing experience in the ugly, but being that I like this pen so much, and it's a pen that I personally bought for my personal use, I did go through the hassle of getting it exchanged. I think that in the end, even with the hassle, this pen offers so much in terms of aesthetic. I'm willing to get the pen to write the way it should, whether it's by swapping it out or tinkering with it, as well as deal with the elements in the ugly that I mentioned. I think overall, it's far better to have this pen and live with the nuances that remind me that it's not a perfect pen than not have this pen at all. If I didn't have this pen, I would be sad, but I do, so I'm happy. Now, on the other hand, if you don't like the look and it's too opulent for you, then we are talking an entirely different story. I mean, obviously, right? Like if you don't like the look of something, why would you buy it at all, right? But if the look appeals to you, pull the trigger on the Conklin Endura Abalone Shell Fountain Pen. Now, being that Pen Chalet is the sponsor for this video, I would really like to say to buy it from them, but I can't because they sold out of them. From what I understand, this limited edition is selling out fast. So if you're planning on getting this pen, get it where you can as soon as you can. If the writing experience is an issue like mine was, I am sure the retailer or brand will work with you on a nib exchange or a nib unit exchange, being that there are far more nib units and nibs available than there are of these pens. That was my review of the Conklin Endura Abalone Shell Fountain Pen. I hope you found it helpful. Thanks again for watching. Love you guys. Be well, be safe.